Amtec just came out with this brand new Polar 350 laser engraver and I am so glad to um, have been able to get one in return for documenting my experience with it. Um, and as you can see it arrived with some shipping damage. This is brought on a large tractor trailer and you have to follow the instructions that they have on the box here and I took pictures of it. I had the driver take pictures. I had the driver sign on the receipt. There was damage before I signed it and I accepted it because the damage didn't really look that bad to me. But you never know what's inside so you have to make sure everything is taken care of at the delivery time. If you don't do all that up front you could be liable for the damage later so um, don't skip if you do see a package arrive like this. And it does happen with uh, LTL deliveries. Now I'm going to post some of these specs about it. 510 by 300 millimeter working area basically. And you can pull the tray out and have a little bit deeper area. Uh, it has a 50 watt laser tube, CO2 laser. And it has a very high service life. A 10,000 hour tube if it's in the 40 to 70 percent use range. Um, pass through is in the front and back of it. It comes with the air assist, water cooler, and digital camera all integrated into the unit. Um, and it does provide a RD work software. And I just had to upgrade my light burn DSP to DSP um, level to be able to use it with this. So here it is. Um, finally removing, got the top off the crate. I brought it in on some dollies into my shop. And just as I thought, there was a nice piece of foam on top of it. And even the, uh, the honeycomb there looks good. No damage to it. So I got lucky. No real damage, uh, I can see. And here you can see once I picked the top off. No dings, no dents, no cracks, nothing. So, And I will tell you, this is heavy. One person cannot pick it up by themselves. Um, I actually have this little nifty lift that I use for picking up machinery and getting it out of crates and stuff in my basement. I put a heavy duty hook in the ceiling and it'll pick up to about 500 pounds. So this was the easiest way for me to get it out. I just clamped a piece of wood in there to keep those orange straps stretched out so they wouldn't, you know, pull in and they would pick it up straight. So it turned into a pretty easy job and there you can see that little lift. And I'm just going to put it on a portable table for now so I can uh, unpack it and start getting things set up before I move it to the permanent spot. So definitely you're going to need either, you know, mechanical help or at least one more person to get this out of the crate. So let's start cutting off some of this plastic and take a first look at it and make sure there's, you know, absolutely no damage to it. Which pretty much you can see it's a uh, perfect condition. Uh, there's some information about, you know, if you have problems or if you want to download the manual, which I already have done. So I'm just going to look it over now and... Nothing. It came in perfect condition. They really did do a nice job of packaging this to make the trip. Um, really sweet glass lid that picks up there. That, or maybe it's even plastic, but it's supposed to be um, protect your eyes. And everything inside it was really packed good. Um, it was packed tight so it didn't shake and get damaged in shipping, which really was a good thing because it looks like some of those trucking companies can be a little rough. There's a fan with a remote control for it and uh, another box in there, package in there. Packed in there nice and tight with some uh, tools and parts you need and came with all the hose you need to set it up. So, I mean, as I go along, you will see this is a, you know, it's a full set of everything you need to get going. And boy, is it beautiful. Really nice sweet top that you know picks up and closes nicely and and don't forget to look in the bottom of the crate. There was the uh, extra materials package here. You can see where the crate company or the freight company poked something up through the bottom there. But luckily, just the backside of that one sheet had a little scratch in it. 
and then there is one side packaging there there that actually contains two rotary assemblies so let's look at what we got we got the honeycomb we got the exhaust fan for outdoor exhausting this unit got all the hoses and adapters that are needed 15 foot of hose i think all together a remote control for the fan all the hose clamps and stuff we did get two different rotary assemblies for different size items with extra drive wheels and all the proper cables that are needed for them. And there was a network cable and then two USB cables if you're going to run it off USB. One for the machine, one for the camera. A uh, second lens assembly there. A USB drive with the software. And some tools and little Q-tips for cleaning the lens big bonus is you get five sheets of uh, three millimeter basswood plywood get some uh, three millimeter cardboard and you also get three millimeter acrylic sheets which that stuff I'm finding out is quite expensive these days so I'm going to start setting up the back of it so I can move it over into place and the first thing is there's a interlock key that it's a safety device so you can't run the unit without it if you're going to be away or have a kid or something in the house I'd you know leave this off but for me I'm basically you just snap it in place push it in it snaps in place and locks here and then there's a knob there you have to turn fully clockwise to allow full power and then it came with a 110 volt power cord for my you know electrical system now there is a five inch hose that goes on the unit itself and all the clamps are provided so you know you can see that's pretty easy now the little strip there that pulls out and if you want to feed through um it's only a couple you know a couple millimeters thick material you can fit through it for the feed through but um you know right through and out the front if you need something long to have to move you know something long or make multiple part items so i'm moving it over to the bench that i bought for it a couple months ago i showed you that in a video and it's one of those Home Depot Husky workbenches. Just the right size for the unit. It sits a little bit high, but um, I kind of I like it that way. And first thing I have to do is get the exhaust hooked in. Um, I did hook another TY into my existing exhaust for the other lasers. So I'm just going to try going through the 4-inch line for now with that. And I did download the latest manual off the website printed that out about a week ago so I had a chance to read it before this arrived that's a good thing to do if you're planning on buying one get familiar with it so I'm going to start by installing the fan on a piece of wood so I can mount it up in the floor joists there and it comes right apart those straps you remove them loosen the screws pop them off and it comes apart just remember how everything looks and you put it back together the same way one thing to do is be sure that your home has adequate air to replace the air that this uh, fan removes. You do not want to create a vacuum in your house because that could cause problems with any kind of um, heating system you have or anything else. It could pull fumes right back into the house. So, you know, make sure you have adequate air import before you, you know, even do uh, start this. And it's really easy. You, you know, you do have to take it apart to get the screws. And I use some M5 hardware with an extra set of lock nuts on there. Just to be sure it wouldn't fall on my head. And then it's just a matter of sliding that centerpiece back in. And locating those rings and tightening the screws. So it's kind of tricky to get those screws in for some reason. But, you know, it only takes a couple seconds extra. And I mounted that up in the floor joist there. And... I had previously bought that adapt four to six inch adapter that fit right on one side and it came with an adapter the the five to six and that was a little bit tight i couldn't get it on so i took my heat gun to it and the heat actually expanded that almost an eighth of an inch unbelievable so it slid right in place here and you need some batteries for the remote control and the fan actually really nice quiet fan Seems to have good flow, even going down through the four inches pipe and stuff. So I think that'll be good for my application. And I just stuck the remote using the double-sided tape over on the side of the laser. 
Now I decided to pull it apart and just show you what's inside one of these little desktop laser units and you know why the cost is a little bit up there. And you can see there's a uh, big big laser tube, CO2 tube, and there's a actual radiator there for cooling the laser tube water. Um, there's some mirrors there. And there are LEDs inside there. My fingers are too fat to get the connectors off, so I kind of just left the wires hanging. And you can see it's all square rail slides on here. Um, there is a water tank. Luckily, they shipped it with an antifreeze in it, so it didn't freeze coming across country. But you can see it's all liquid cooled. Um, and that laser tube does go from one end, one end of the chassis to the other. It's a fairly large tube. And there's some power supplies and water pumps and, you know, whatnot back there. And probably some more electronics by the fan there behind that panel. So pretty much you see it comes with a honeycomb. And there are some mirrors there that are supposedly um, pretty much adjusted for life. You're not supposed to have to adjust them on that end there. And here's the laser head itself. Just pop that off of there, and you can see there's a little little focusing motor in there. You have to, um, you know, you set the focus distance, and it auto focuses, and everything is a uh, really nice precision made, and really nice job. And there's the air assist line, and I think that's a little air assist pump there. We'll see how that works once we get it fired up. I just wanted to give you an idea of what's you know, actually involved in one of these, um, you know, it is a complete package ready to run. It's not like you have to build an enclosure and design an enclosure and buy a honeycomb and buy an air pump and, you know, everything else. So, in the end, it's really about the same cost as the diode laser, some of the higher end ones. And you can see you can pull out that tray and this honeycomb grid there to have more Z height in there. And take a look at the base plate of this machine. It's one big sheet of uh, solid aluminum. It really seems to be well made. And, you know, we'll get to see um, how it works in uh, another video. Now, I'm just going to turn it on here. I plugged it in. I do not have a computer hooked up. I just turned it on. You can see it went to the auto homing cycle. And it home by itself. Everything seems to be nice, quiet. Uh, looks like everything works on it. So I just wanted to make sure nothing had rattled loose in shipping or anything. Really good looking unit too. It's got the camera in the top there when you open it. I have to set that up. And, uh, you know, lights in that one pass through. So we'll get to see in, uh, you know, the upcoming videos how to get this hooked up to the light burn and um, doing some of the first burns and some real projects with it. And down there is a little milliamp meter, and we'll have to run some tests on the laser tube to set this up. And one thing you should have in your shop, no matter whether you have a laser or not, is a fire extinguisher. So this is the beginning of my journey with this machine, and I just wanted to show you that, you know, everything, some things have problems when they get shipped across country, they can get beat up pretty good, and, um... You know, just take care of it according to the instructions they provide, and uh, it should be covered by insurance. And this is a complete solution for um, getting up and getting into the CO2 laser engraving world, which is what I've been wanting to do for a couple of years now. All of the info in these uh, upcoming videos in this one are my opinion and 100% controlled by me. So I just want to, you know, make sure that I'm going to try to keep this uh, totally honest even though they provided the unit join me on this journey if you're interested in upgrading to this type of machine thanks for watching please subscribe